Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it's time for another daily dose of Dismal Disney. Oh, yay. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Uh, we're going to talk about the situation with uh, Jim Cramer on mm -hmm. CNBC saying he's actually going to vote to put Nelson Peltz on Disney's board. This yes. is uh, this is uh, kind of a big deal. It is. So CNBC has their own investing club show and they have Jim Cramer and another person who hosts and they do like this membership thing and all that to tell people how to invest, to give investing advice, to give like um, stories and things they're hearing, that kind of stuff. Well, apparently they were having their second annual meeting and he basically said he's voting blue for Peltz and Rizzullo. Yeah, so that's uh, that's interesting because CNBC always is first with Disney financial mm -hmm. news. Bob Iger always goes running the CNBC. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's going to now because they're turning on him. Yeah, well, at least the so. person that's their investing club spokesperson is like saying, hey, you know, I like to make money. I don't yeah. like losing money. And that's the thing. I mean, Disney can, uh, you know, they can bullshit people as long as they want to. But at the end of the day, it's like, look, you know, the people they're in charge right now, they've been running everything into a, a freaking iceberg. So if you want Disney to have a chance at course correction, you're going to have to put some people in that can do that. Right. And then the, the thing is, too, this was after, and I think it was on CNBC, they were talking to somebody from, I think it was Moffat Nathanson. I can't remember if it was, I think it was that. And the person was basically like, well, Peltz has some valid points, you know, about the, the streaming service and the things like that. And I was like shocked then. And that was I think also on CNBC. And yeah. now their own investing club guy is like, eh, you know, I'm voting blue. Yeah, they're, and I think a lot of people are, even if they're not making a big deal about it, I think they're going to look at it and they're going to be like, yeah, we want to make money. We want to make money. And Do you want to make money? Sure. Sure, we all do. Sure, we all do. And if you want to make money, keeping the board intact is not a way to do it. Uh, I don't think they have a plan. I think the stuff that they were throwing against the wall, I'm, I'm with Nelson Peltz. It seemed like a, a bunch of last minute stuff that they mm -hmm. were just trying to bullshit that people. Most of it's not gonna work and they don't even have no. it planned out. And no. the only thing I think it might work is, you know, the Taylor Swift stuff. Yeah, I don't think the Epic Games thing is gonna work I don't out. Think the, the sports thing is gonna work no. out very well. Nope. Um, and this not all, and they don't even know if that'll go through. It has to go through all the different channels to make sure it's approved. And they're gonna compete with Epic Universe, which is looking to be one of the best theme parks ever created anywhere. They're looking to compete with Epic Universe with a Country Bear Jamboree overlay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, you know, a, a Tree of Life new sh projection show. Yeah, anything that's done on the cheap. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's going to work. Mean, relatively cheap. It's still a lot expensive. But right, yes. right. But before we get into it any further. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants. Guys, yeah, woohoo if you do. Woohoo. So uh, walk me through this. I did not read this article yet. Okay, so uh, apparently this is actually part of their uh, CNBC thing they have up with this Jim Cramer. So there's a, their investor club. So he was at their Saturday at their second annual meeting in New York City. Mm -hmm. And he basically told people that they're going to vote blue. They're okay. going to vote for Peltz and, and Rizzullo. So if you're not familiar, there's a proxy battle coming to Disney it's going to be their annual shareholder meeting is April 3rd. I think the voting has to be in, I think, pre ahead of time by the 2nd. You might be able to still vote in the 3rd. I'm not sure, but not online. I think ahead of time, you have to have it in by the 2nd. Um, Disney wants you to keep the powers that be in control because they've done such a wonderful job so far. Yeah. And they have their white proxy card. So we have Nelson Peltz with Tryon Group and he and Jay Rizzullo, who was the CFO of Disney for years and was in line to be CEO. He's bringing, those two are coming after it and want to make some changes. They're the blue card. And then you have uh, the Blackwells group and they're, I think, a green card. And there's three of them who are looking for seats. So it's a, a three-way battle. There was a fourth group, Value Act Capital, but Disney made some kind of side deal with them. And, and now they're helping Disney mm -hmm. on the board. So for Jim Cramer to come out and say, I'm voting blue is kind of a big deal. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It says here, they said that he's going to vote blue to put Tryon Partners founder Peltz and former Disney CFO Jay Rizzullo on the D Disney board. They believe that they will hold the, the board and management accountable for making changes to fix the business and turn the company's uh, underperforming stock around. Um, Disney, of course, wants to make sure you keep the status quo. So we're talking about you to vote white. Um, it's interesting, though, if you go down through that, throughout this, he's talking about 
one thing that that try that try and partners uh, Peltz has brought up a few times. Most of the board don't even own Disney stock. Like they themselves have very few shares or none at all. So there's no personal vested interest for them to work quickly to change the stock other than keeping their board seat. Like they don't have a, a any you know skin in the game, a dog in the fight. They don't they don't personally lose any money if the company does bad, which I think is not good anyway. Like you should have you know you should at least have some shares so that you're 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 at least trying to be responsible with it. Yeah, uh, that that came up, I think, with Twitter, too, when when they were in discussions by Twitter, like a lot of the people that were making the decisions didn't have a lot of shares mm -hmm. of Twitter. It's like it's no skin off your nose. I mean, exactly. that's the thing. Like if if you're a member of the board, I, I think it, you should have a financial interest in the company because you can just walk away from it and say, well, you know, whatever, whatever we tried. Right. At least I tried. Right. And that's what he said. He said that he like he respects the individual members of the board. He knows some of them. He said, but collectively, they're not that impressive in the boardroom. And he said that the, the board owns very little stock and they don't have enough skin in the game to act with the urgency needed to right the ship. Peltz, however, has a lot of stock with his company, and he also has um, like Perlmutter shares, which it turns out Perlmutter is also a friend of Jim Cramer. Oh, boy. So, now they're going to say that's a conflict of interest. Well, here's you, what's you conflict of interest. To, you know? you want to talk about conflict of interest and revenge. I want to bring up again that, you know, I don't, don't get me wrong. I don't think Perlmutter, I know he's made mistakes, and I, I, I don't, some of the things he's, he did I don't think are right. That being said, I think a lot of stuff he did do was right as well. The, they, keep argue, they keep arguing that, oh, well, he's just doing it revenge for Iger. I want to remind everyone that when Peltz tried to do the proxy battle last year, Ike Perlmutter stuck his neck out and backed Peltz. Then Peltz you know, pulled back and decided not to go after the proxy battle when, when Bob Iger promised change. And then among the first things um, uh, Iger did after he got a reprieve was fire Perlmutter. You know, so if you want yeah. to talk about, you know, him coming after Iger because of revenge, Iger did it first because oh, he yeah. was pissed that Perlmutter backed Peltz. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, potato, potato, you know, bitch slap, bitch slap. I don't want to tell you. It was already started before that. Anyway, so I guess he talked to uh, Perlmutter because a lot of the shares they have are his. Basically, what Perlmutter is saying is what he wants to see from Disney is higher stock prices, like the stock being worth more. Mm. that Disney gets the costs down because they're overspending, especially when it comes to streaming and they stop making bad movies. Yeah. He's like, it's, it's, we live in this crazy world where Netflix is outperforming Disney. Yeah, and, exactly. I mean, they're, they're beating Disney on so many levels. It's not just the stock, but it's also the, the content, like their animated movies. They, they pulled away. Netflix pulled away so many top talents from Disney and they're making animation over at Netflix. And then you've got universal, you know, with its theme park, with Epic Universe coming, and they're destroying Disney. So it's like Disney's just basically, Disney has stopped being Disney. Disney, current year Disney under Bob Iger is just a collection of random IP that they mismanage. Well, yeah, that's what he's saying. He's like, he, he said, you know, Disney, the Disney brand name and the stuff they have, they have under it, like Marvel, Star Wars. Yeah. He's like, it's ridiculous to me that Netflix has crushed Disney. Yeah. And we're not talking just a little bit. Like Netflix is like massively crushing, you know, pretty much everyone. I think the only one crushing Netflix is YouTube. At this point. For now. Yeah. Yeah. For now. So, it, and, and I guess that he goes even further and said that he went out and talked to other CEOs of companies that Peltz has been, you know, on the board for. Because he said, we need somebody in there that isn't the status quo. We need somebody in there to ask the hard questions, to be like, you know, what are you doing? I don't think this is a good idea. And he said that other CEOs have given him good reviews and said that he did an amazing job because he asks questions and stops them from doing stupid things. <laughs> yeah, that's sometimes that's all it takes. Just what what are you doing that isn't working? Okay, well stop doing that. Yeah, he's like, you know, this isn't working. You no, know, if you have all yes men in there, and Iger surrounds himself with those who are going to agree with him, and the people they're trying to boot from Disney, the two that 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 they're targeting the most with uh, Triumph Partners is targeting. One is his wife's friend's husband. Wait, what? <laughs> I know <laughs> that's okay. There's yeah. And the other one um, is another woman, and she had connections to him somehow, too, but they're both, like, his yes people. I, I guess they're all of them are yes people, but these two, I guess, are more so. And they're targeting those two to get them removed. Well, it, it's, you know, I did a video yesterday when uh, you, you were out about I was out. the comic book industry. 
and they're starting to course correct now. And it's actually very, very easy to fix comics. You just have to give consumers what they want and, uh, you know, make sure that you listen to what they're telling you. And then you, you give them what they want and you, uh, make it readily available. You give it to them at a good price and they will buy it. That's all. That's all you have to do. Just give people what they want. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because everybody's like, well, 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 when they had their last earnings call at Disney and they were starting to give shareholders what they wanted by these numbers, um, this guy's even like, I think the rally on the stock is because the company had its mind concentrated on pelts yeah. and Rizzullo. You know, it, 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 it's because everybody's hoping that these guys are going to, even if they threaten it, that something's going to get better. And then Disney, like you said, threw a bunch of shit to be like, look, look, look we're fixing it. Mm -hmm. But most of it, if you look if you look further than the surface, you can see that that's not necessarily the fix that they're promising, nor is it necessarily, you know, a completely done deal. So this this reminds me of like sometimes if somebody gets written up at work, like you you just had your evaluation, your quarterly evaluation or whatever, and you're not performing. Um they will, they might be given like, okay, well, you're given like, like another month to get your shit together before we fire you. And what they'll do is they'll hurry up and do a bunch of stuff that they should have been doing the whole time. Right, and that's, what, that's what they did. You know? It's like if you were, as I said how many times, if you were able to to up the stocks, raise the stocks by a couple announcements like Moana 2, which yeah. was a, a show you're already working on, you could have announced you're working on the show. Just that announcement would have probably driven your stocks up. But you did nothing until you absolutely had to because they, then they and they wouldn't make no mistake. If they didn't think they were on, they were being threatened and there was a viable threat, they wouldn't do anything. They wouldn't have to. But the fact that they're scrambling tells you, and they're putting out the stuff like that stupid Ludwig von Drake Disney nostalgia bait video they did to try to like, vote Disney. And here's one of our voiceovers you recognize vote Disney. They wouldn't be going to all this trouble with a website and everything if they were thinking that, that it was a, a nothing burger. Yeah, I they're they're afraid. They're they're very afraid. You can tell they're afraid um, because, like you said, they thought they actually had this. And I think they thought they had it because, again, they threw this Ludwig von Drake thing together at the last minute. And that wasn't the only one. They had another video or something yeah, they put they out did. there, too. And they're just hitting people with it because it was, you know, right before they they actually, you know, sent the, the cards out, which we filled out and, and guess guess how we voted. Blue. But but um, you know, so I think they're concerned. Yeah. I think they are. And and just pelts alone, I mean, he he has control of so many shares. Well then they're like like, oh, it's a hostile takeover. It's not a hostile takeover. They're going for two board seats. They're not taking over the company. The two board seats doesn't give them the power to to do, you know, it has, it has the power to have a voice, a power to ask questions, a power to raise concerns, a power to try to, to direct in a different a different way. But it's not enough to, like, change the course of everything and take over the yeah. whole dang Disney company. Come on. That's not how math works. But it would be a, it would be a step in the right direction because, and whether it was them or Blackwell, even though I do think that the, the Pelts group is better, trying better for this, um, either one succeeding would be a win for people because then people are going to get in there and ask questions. Like, what can we do to salvage this? How can we get our streaming service up? How can we make the parks better? How can we, you know, stay competitive? Because you're only going to make money as shareholders as long as you, you keep everything competitive and there's a demand for it. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's the thing too. Like, you know, you look at what, uh, you know, these other companies are doing. They're, they're going to force Disney to get better one way or another. But I don't think Disney can get better with the current team that they, they have. Or they would have the by problem. now. Yes. They and, would have by And they now. only pull stuff out of their ass when they have to. Because it's not just like Universal is just looming now. It's not that Netflix is just looming no. now. They've been losing to competitors. I mean, when, when it was very clear that they had a brain drain, when they had all their top animators leaving for Skydance or... Uh, Netflix or whatever it was, that should have been an indicator that, hey, yeah, this is like literally what the company is founded on is animation. Um, this is a problem. If we can't retain the best animators in the industry at the Walt Disney Company. Then you get Wish. Then you get Wish. And it's basically Disney from Wish. Pretty much. I mean, I mean the animators, that, I, animators were doing videos calling out how bad the unfinished the animation was. I mean, isn't that ironic? I'm sure other yeah. people made that observation I'm sure they have. that the the movie it's a Disney movie celebrating the legacy of Disney animation. It looks like Disney from Wish, and it's called Wish. Yeah, I'm sure just, other people you know. have made that. But yeah, so anyway, it's it's very interesting because now we got CNBC and their investing club. Um, and the, one of the one of leaders of that is at a New York City meeting with uh, club members who are all in there to make money. 
yeah. telling them to vote blue or that, that he's voting blue. And that basically it's like, here's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And you can follow if you want to. But the whole purpose of the club is to like, you know, kind of help everybody make money. Yep. So it's kind of a big deal. Anyway, we're going to anyway. wrap this up. We're going to wrap this up. We're going to wrap it up. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.